All right, so today I'm gonna to show you guys how to boot an ISO through Pixie Boot using iVentor. So let's get started. Now, a couple of days ago, I made a video on how to Pixie Boot using Next Boot XYZ in your environment so you could actually boot through your network. My only complaint on that was that I wasn't able to load my own ISO files. So there was a couple of operating systems I wasn't able to load if I wanted to. Now, after a little bit of research, I was able to find iVentoy, which actually answers my question to that problem. So I'm gonna show you guys right here. Now, here I have my test environment, same from last time. I am using the same computer, but you can see this is now the iVentoy solution. And I have a couple of ISOs popped in there, so I am actually able to load into those. So here I have Ubuntu 24, I have Debian 12, and I have Cutefish, which is an operating system based off of Ubuntu. So I'm gonna try the loading into Ubuntu itself. In here, as soon as I hit enter, it works right away. And there we have it. It's just loading right into Ubuntu installer. And this is an ISO that I just put in. I didn't have to do any special technique. I just had to upload the ISO to iVentoy and it loads right away. So I'm gonna reboot this machine, jump right back into this option, which is number three. And you can see it's picking up Pixie Boot and it jumps right into iVentoy. Now, they do have a web GUI that you could actually play around with. And here you could see that I have the free edition. They do have different editions for this. This is my IP address. This is the current machine that loaded and it's in BIOS mode. And if I go into configurations, it'll, I have a little bit of playing around here. I could change the resolution. I could change the DHCP mode. And if I go into Mac filter, I could either go into deny mode. So I could actually add Mac addresses to block uh, so I don't have iVentoy loading to those machines or permit mode or allow mode. So this has a little bit more configurations that I could do over Netboot XYZ as far as permissions go. And then in my image management, you can see I only have three ISOs. And I can actually configure something with this. Like if I go into Debian, I could actually make, set this as default. If I have an auto script installer, I could add it over here. And there's a few other things that you could do off to the side. Same with the other ISOs as well. And then registration information has to do with subscribing from free edition to pro edition. But mainly this is what we have to deal with. But yes, if I want to load into another operating system, say Debian, I could load right into Debian and you can see how fast that was. And it's loading directly right off the ISO that I have right over here. So iVentoy basically answers all the things that I need, which is loading my own ISOs over the network using Pixie Boot. So I'm gonna show you guys how to install this. All right, so we're gonna create a container and you can still, I still have my Netboot XYZ over here, but it's still under OpenWRT. So we're gonna do the same thing because a lot of the heavy lifting is under the OpenWRT to point the server to the correct location. So I'm gonna create a CT. Over here, I'm gonna do 103 and I'm gonna do iVentoy. Uh, and then I'm just gonna give it a password. And I do have to make it so it's unchecked for unprivileged like that. Uh, template, I am actually gonna be using Ubuntu 22. Doesn't matter, you could use Debian, you could use uh, Ubuntu. I was just playing around with Ubuntu, so I'm just gonna stick with it. Uh, 32 gigs of disk space. This all depends on how much uh, ISOs you wanna put in here. So the, uh, obviously the more space, the more ISOs you could use. So I'm gonna just put 32, but it's easily, you could easily increase this if you want to. So I'm gonna do CPU for one, memory half a gig of RAM. Now network for me, I'm actually gonna use VBR1, which is um, under my OpenWRT container. And I'm gonna change this over to DHCP. Hit next, next, and then confirm. And then I'm gonna let this start up. Now I can close this out, go to Ventoy, go to console and start this up. Now I can log in. And from here, we need to actually grab the Ventoy releases. So basically from their website, all you have to go, do is go into downloads, head over to their GitHub, and in their releases, this is the latest release, this was only about a couple of days ago. I'm gonna right click and grab this, copy link. And I'm gonna wget and paste it over here. Next, I am gonna tar and extract this with ZXVF iVentoy. And it's gonna list out all the structures. And now I have a folder called iVentoy. So I'm gonna CD into iVentoy. And we're gonna have a couple of folders here, the data, doc, ISOs, lib, log, and users. Now I'm gonna grab the IP address for this machine, which is 198. And I am actually gonna run iVentoy. So I'm gonna do period slash iVentoy uh, dash A start. Now, if you're running into issues like I am right now, I had this before, 
which PID equals zero. And that has to do with the unprivileged container mode. Even though I have it checked right over here, uh, I believe I have to still go into shell of the main host over here and modify the config file and add unprivileged equals zero or colon zero like that. And from here, I am actually gonna reboot the Ventoy because I just put in new effects. So I'm gonna reset this. Let's see, root and then I Ventoy and then I'm gonna run I Ventoy dash A start. All right, and there we have it. And if you can see status, even though it returned back with PID zero, uh, I tried it again and then it came me back with a PID. So it did work for some odd reason. I, I had to do this a few times before. And if you want to be sure to that everything is working, you just run the netstat. And let me see, I don't have netstat. So let's do app install net tools. And I could do netstat dash plant. And you could see that the port 2600 is open. And my IP address here is actually 198. So what I need to do is now forward the correct port. So I'm gonna go into 192.168 to my router. And in here, I am gonna go over to network, firewall. And since I played around with this already, I'm just gonna go back into my invent, iVentoy and change the IP address to the new one, which is the 198, save. And I'm only forwarding port 2600. Again, depending on your router, this might be slightly different, but you just need to forward the port so you get to it. Well, I need to. You guys don't might not need to, depending on how your router is set up. And then now I could refresh this website, and you could see this is the newly loaded iVentoy, and this has 198, has the little play button, which means nothing is started yet. The server is not started yet. And you can't start the server unless you have at least one ISO in the folders, which I do not have yet. And then if you go into configurations, we do need to change some settings here too. So in DHCP mode, we do have to change this to external so we don't manage it internally. And then we could change some of the settings over here and I will change this to snp.efi. And you could change the boot resolution depending on your device. Uh, most standard is 1024 by 768, so I'm just gonna leave this. I'm just gonna hit save. And then Mac filter, I spoke about this earlier. And then you have image management, which I don't have any images, so we're gonna have to upload some. And that is it, everything is working. Next thing what I need to do, since I got that all configured out, is go back into my OpenWRT, right? I have to go into the shell or SSH into here, and I will have to VI into ETC DNS masquerade. And in our case, I'm gonna pull the same examples that I did from last time for Netboot XYZ. And it has a bunch of things over here updating your uh, router. So if you have a PFSense, you just need to do this. If you have OpenSense, you need to do this. For us, we have uh, OpenWRT, so I need to run these files. Now, I don't need all of this because I just need the first file. So I'm just gonna grab this and I'm gonna copy this. And what we need to change is this file, nixbootxyz.kpex and your server IP. So in my case, what we need to do is go back into Ventoy, head over to Documents, and then if you go over to DHCP Server Third Party, it's actually gonna have the file right over here called iVentoy Loader 1600. Now 16,000, or not 1600, 16,000 is actually the port of your HTTP server. So if you change the port of your HTTP server to 17,000, then you need to change this respectively. But Default is 16,000 and I'm gonna leave that as is. So I'm gonna head into my OpenWRT and go all the way down here. And if you could see, I already did this into my DHCP for my preview before. All I have to do is change this to iVentoy Loader 1600 and then the IP address. Now the IP address is slightly different from what my last test was. So it's 198 this time and I'm gonna change that and leave the iVentoy Loader 1600 like just like that. Escape, colon, WQ, write and quit. And then I can reboot this router and it will take in the effect as soon as this gets rebooted. Now in my iVentoy, I do still have to load ISO files. So I'm gonna go into the ISO directory, you can see, and there's nothing here. I'm gonna go into Debian 
and download. And I am gonna download uh, the net installer, which seems to be the smallest. So I don't have to waste all that time and we'll see if this works. So I'm gonna grab this copy link and I'm gonna do a w get and paste this link right over here. Which shouldn't be that long because it's much smaller, but it should still be able to prove as an example that I boot into this. All right, now that this is all downloaded, what I need to do is head back into iVentoy, refresh the image list. I should have one, which is the net install. Go to boot information and now I can hit play. And now it's running. How I could tell it's running is if I go back into iVentoy, I could do net stat dash plant. And you can see port 1600 is running right over here. So I'm gonna go over to my test machine, which we created earlier before. It's only a six gigabyte, one core standard VM that I just put together. I'm gonna to hit start and I'm gonna hit escape over here. Oops, let me reset this because I missed it. I'm gonna go into Pixie Boot, press number three. And it should now pick up the new pick uh, Ven iVentor right over here and there we go it is picking it up and there you go I have my net install ISO that we installed earlier which is only 629 megs hit enter on this and again read the documentation they do have a lot of stuff but they do have also tested ISO so you can see what ISOs they already have like Windows work Debian Ubuntu Deepin all these operating systems already tested on this and it does work so uh, Cubefish, like I was testing earlier, was based off Ubuntu, so I know it was going to work. Windows does work. And there's a few others on here that you could look through if you are interested to see. But your mileage may vary depending on what operating system you're planning to test. But yeah, that's about it. To me, I find this to be a much easier way to load the ISOs that I want to test instead of having to rely on Netboot XYZ to create the files for me. And it's a lot easier just to upload the ISO to this area and get it booted onto the devices that I wanted to install it on. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And I say my NR Cave, hack till it hurts.